Hello YouTube, Dave here again. Uh, so, over the last little while I've had a few different people request that I make a video showing off how I sort of have my collection stored or presented um, now that uh, we basically moved from where we were before. So, a few years back I made a room tour video uh, when we were renting a house, there was a room in the basement where I had uh, a gaming room basically set up. And, uh, you know, even though I liked the space, <coughs> there were definitely some issues uh, with, the, uh, with the person we were renting from. And we ended up moving, actually, from the South Shore, Nova Scotia, all the way into Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, when my fiancé got a job. So we're now living in a three-bedroom apartment, as opposed to a, you know, bungalow-style house with a fully finished basement. So it's not as easy to have everything stored uh, or presented the way that I would necessarily like. Um, but I've had some people ask, so I thought I would uh, go ahead and make this video. A uh, couple things. Number one, I know that I need to dust. Um, I just we don't have a duster uh, right now, so it's I, I apologize for that. Uh, and yeah, so let's just go ahead and uh, start here. So. This is actually a uh, my wooden desk that I've had ever since I was a kid. And this is set up, unfortunately, the only place that I could fit this was right in front of our um, living room window. <coughs> so uh, we have, you know, dark curtains that I usually have drawn um, to cover everything. So um, right now it's open, obviously, so I can get some lighting because, like most apartments, there's no overhead lighting in the living room whatsoever. So anyway, uh, like I'm not going to go through every single thing, but I'll just try to point out the stuff that I can. So this stack here is a lot of uh, video game related books and some wrestling related books. So I have things like strategy guides that I picked up for some games uh, when I pre-ordered them from EB Games. I would have something where you could get 40% uh, off your uh, strategy guide if you got it the same day as the, the game released. And I've got a couple of Resident Evil uh, Archives books which are really cool. Uh, here I've got my Zelda, Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask book. On top of a stack of, uh, these are Dragon magazines. And over here I've got some Dungeon magazines. I do have a bunch of them out right now, just, uh, you know, looking over them for various things. Some other uh, random books here. I'm just trying to see what I can see in the viewfinder. Um, <clears throat> some other books here, just a box full of minis for one of my D&D uh, &D games that I'm running. And uh, just my Undertaker Tombstone uh, video there. I, I, I watch a lot of wrestling DVDs um, when I get the opportunity, so that's just one of the more recent ones I was looking at. And then up here, just have some gaming-related DVDs, uh, as well as my collector's uh, sets of dice for Dungeons and Dragons. There's the D&D animated series, um, and then some DVDs here. Then I got my Lovecraftian stuff. Uh, Fall of Cthulhu, Lovecraft Unbound, the Necronomicon. Uh, just on top, I've got some sets of uh, Mythos, the card game. <clears throat> then I've got my Wii U gamepad um, protective cases. These are the ones that I have used. So I've got the Legend of Zelda one, which is currently on uh, my Wii U. And then I've got the Mario Maker one, which got worn pretty bad. Uh, my first Carcassonne. And here I've got some of my Starfinder collection. And I just actually moved this over yesterday. <laughs> so this is still a work in progress and I would like to ideally get all of the Starfinder stuff back together again. But it just sort of keeps expanding. So I've got all of my flip mats here and all of my uh, Adventure Path books. So I've got all of the first 15. That's all of them that are out uh, as of right now. Uh, the beginner box and the D&D 5th edition starter set. These are my opened ones. <clears throat> Up top here I have my My Little Cthulhu's. And a few years back, Walmart was selling these Pokemon tins for like 10 bucks, I think, of something like that. And that's Canadian, so that's actually a pretty good price. So uh, the inside of the tins I think are empty, but I just have them with like the promo cards uh, sticking out because, you know, I, I do think that they are pretty cool looking. My Montreal Canadiens uh, tree ornament. Um, I'm a Canadiens fan for, you know, I'm a, Cana I'm a Canadian myself, so hockey is obviously kind of a big thing. Uh, <clears throat> when it comes to why I like the Montreal Canadiens, it actually goes back to the fact that my grandfather was a Maple Leafs fan. 
So in the spirit of antagonism, I uh, went for their biggest rival, so we could sort of uh, have arguments and debates over that. All in good fun, of course, and that actually continues on nowadays with my fiancé's father, uh, because he is initially, um, he was born in Massachusetts, so uh, he's a big Boston Bruins fan, and uh, there's a lot of bad blood between those two teams, uh, so we like to, to needle each other when it comes to that. I uh, just have my Nintendo Switch box on top of that, and the second iteration of the D&D Minis game, that's the starter set, it is not sealed. <clears throat> I had it open initially to use the Green Dragon Mini, and I had it taped back up, and I even used some super glue to glue it back up, but when I was moving that last night, it popped back open, so I'll, I'll deal with that later. Um, just some minis that I have painted here, and you know, not that I'm saying I'm a very skilled painter. Uh, I got some old Canadian money. Uh, we no longer have a $2 bill. Um, this one's from like the 1930s. And I've got the $1 bill on the other side and a couple of $1 bills uh, stashed inside. They're not really worth a lot, but they are kind of cool. Uh, my Beholder collector set and some just collection of comics and stuff. And my foam Intercontinental Championship belt that I got way back in like 1994. Five, I think it was when we went to go see the Tour de Force in Halifax at the Halifax Forum. The main event was uh, Diesel defending the WWE or the WWF Championship against Psycho Sid, and uh, it was it was a lot of fun to go to the shows. All right, uh, so let's just that's basically this area here, and uh, I do like I said I normally do have the curtain drawn, but if I did that, you wouldn't be able to see anything in this video. <clears throat> so next, let's just move over to sort of my DVD and video game area. Uh, so let me just, uh, we'll just cut and we'll go have a look at that. Alright, so this is just my video game shelf. Uh, I do have more games than what's just on here. Uh, right now our Wii U is actually in uh, my fiance and I's in our bedroom. So I have a, a, st a stack of Wii U games that are in there as well. But just sort of an idea, we got some Amiibos. And you can see one of the gaps there where I had taken some games out. And up top here we have my Zelda shelf along with just a uh, Kirby's uh, 20th anniversary collection and some Super Nintendo games actually in here as well. I just went through cleaning these. Um, I don't know if they work or not. I haven't hooked up my Super Nintendo in a while. But we just have uh, Street Fighter 2, Turtles in Time, and Super Mario All-Stars. I also have Super Mario Land 2 for the Game Boy. I no longer have a Game Boy unfortunately. And we just have another Amiibo up here. These are some of the coasters that I had gotten before. So I just have Super Mario World, Super Mario Kart, and then like Mario Brothers 1, 2, and 3. <clears throat> Behind those are some special editions of like Halo th uh, 4, Halo Reach, Gears of War 3. And then I've got the big box uh, Zelda Twilight Princess for the Wii U. And then we'll just kind of go back down here. And just my DVD shelf. And those are just the, the boxes for all the Planeswalker decks I bought. So this is again pretty unorganized and haphazard. Just you move stuff, you have to put stuff back. So this is something I do want to reorganize, I just haven't gotten around to it. And then up top we have some more wrestling DVDs. Along with a bunch of my boxed, uh, like Super Nintendo, Donkey Kong Country, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance. And this is a French copy <laughs> of uh, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. I got my DS games here and WrestleMania from last year. And I got my WrestleMania collection back in here. SummerSlam's here. I have the Royal Rumble box set as well. It's just it's not currently on the shelf. And uh, these here are just my boxes for some of my more modern games. I took the boxes, uh, I took them out of the boxes and just have the boxes stashed separately. Mainly because I don't want to um, damage them by constantly trying to open and close them. <clears throat> so there's that. There's the, my Batman statue. I came with the collector's edition of Arkham City. And we'll just kind of zoom out here a little bit. So he's got a printer, a couple minis set up on it. Uh, this is my foam WWF Championship belt from 1994. Uh, that was during the Heart Attack Tour. Uh, and the main event was actually a casket match between The Undertaker and Yokozuna. 
which is pretty awesome. That uh, was uh, leading up to Survivor Series 94. Here is my, um, the it's the, the kid's replica, but it honestly looks pretty close to the actual size of the real belt. <laughs> but this is the Winged Eagle uh, WWF or WWE Championship. And then up on the wall here, I have my figures and some uh, sealed amiibo. Uh, this is the other copy of the Zelda uh, gamepad protector. So this one was unopened. And then I've just got my Zelda amiibo, Shovel Knight, some Nintendo stuff, uh, an awesome Undertaker uh, figure in the package with the mask from 1995 when he had, uh, when he had his orbital bone broken and he was wearing that mask for a while. I always thought that mask was really cool. Uh, and then we got my Ninja Turtle figures. Uh, so the ones that look like this are a reissue, they're not the originals. But they are the same style as the originals, the packaging is very similar, uh, which is really cool. I've got the original comic style, uh, all four turtles. And then <clears throat> the original style figures, again these are reissues, but they are pretty awesome. A couple of mutations figures, so we got Shredder and uh, Splinter. Uh, Kirby, uh, the Kirby Bat, I guess that's April O'Neil's father from the uh, Nickelodeon animated, uh, CG animated show a few years back. Then we have another uh, Mutations. This is the one where they turn into the baby turtle. And the two figures that started my uh, Ninja Turtles figure collection um, found at a dollar store, nonetheless. Uh, Leonardo and Michelangelo. I still need to get Raphael and Donatello in those... Uh, in those styles, but um, still pretty cool to have all those, and they fit pretty nicely there um, in that spot. So we'll just sort of zoom out a little bit, and you can <clears throat> sort of see how much room they take up. <clears throat> and then beneath them are some of my uh, icons, dragons. So we got the black, uh, the great worm, black dragon, blue dragon, and of course the massive red dragon. Uh, the Red Dragon is wearing my Volunteer Pass from Hellcon last year, which actually at the time that I'm recording this, uh, just last night, I got confirmation that my um, Volunteer application to run games at 2019's Hellcon was approved, so that's pretty cool. I'm going to start uh, work on that over the next few months. Then we got a Fire Elemental. These are promo minis that I got from my friend when he had his game store. And they're still in the bag, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> the Guild, uh, Munchkin the Guild, an expansion for one of the Munchkin games. I never opened it though, because I just, I didn't want to open it. <clears throat> and then we have another smaller RPG shelf. So this is my Starfinder stuff here, and then some overflow of Dungeons and Dragons. So these are, these three things here are from the D&D Next Playtest era. So these are the two commercially released products, Murder in Baldur's Gate, Legacy of the Crystal Shard. And then we have um, Red Wizards, uh, Dreams of the Red Wizards, the Scourge of the Sword Coast. And then some just fifth edition stuff here. There's Mordekane's Tome of Foes. This is the uh, retailer exclusive. And then we got the Adventure Grid, uh, the, the two map packs, and then the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica here. My Gamma World stuff. For, this was during the 4th edition era. Uh, I also have these window clings that were a part of the 30th anniversary of D&D. So I got a bunch of those. <clears throat> and then we've got my D&D essential stuff. And then down here we just have some box sets which are... Some of them are in pretty rough shape, but I got them at good prices. Uh, some like Order of the Stick uh, and my Zelda books. And then just here I've got just some Boxes of minis um, that are not organized at all. These are probably, a lot of these were ones that I was using for particular games I was running. So we got those there. And in this corner, <laughs> uh, we have a bunch of maps that I drew on one inch gra uh, draft paper uh, to use for games I was running. The Monsters Manual, or Monsters Compendium binder. And then we have the actual, um, uh, D&D uh, RPG, like the big shelf, but we also have like my CDs. Uh, 
And <clears throat> uh, I apologize too if I sound out of breath. I'm just really stuffed up from having, um, I don't know if it's seasonal allergies or a bit of a cold or both, but it's hard to breathe through my nose. So I'm trying to, trying to talk and breathe through my mouth at the same time. Uh, I got my NES Classic, my Super Nintendo Classic, and my PlayStation Classic here. I only paid uh, $50 Canadian versus $130, so good deal there. You know, CDs, all my uh, Cradle of Filth, Dimu Borgir, Tool, Offspring, Perfect Circle, like Metallica, Disturbed, and all this stuff down there. Alright, so as for the RPG shelf itself, here I've just got my tile sets for 5th edition. A couple of box sets for 4th. Uh, these are some modules and stuff here. And my extras for uh, player's handbooks and stuff for the different editions. So second, uh, 3.0, 3.5, fourth. Uh, I do have a fifth edition one that I normally have stored down there, but it's not currently there. And I know it's the shadows, it's hard to see, but there's a bunch of like Dragonlance modules there. On the next shelf, we have our first edition AD&D stuff. Along with some things on top here. And we got second edition going to here. Then we have our basic and expert rules, rules compendiums. And again, I apologize, try to get out of the shadow here. Or try to get out of the light, I should say. Uh, 3.0 stuff there. My 3.5 starter set. And then, oh. I also kind of twisted my back, so bending over to see all these things is also taking its toll on me a bit. Uh, and here we have my uh, campaign settings and some other adventure books. So we got the Forgotten Realms, which goes all the way there. That is 4th edition and 3rd edition, slash 3.5. Then Eberron. Uh, Kingdoms of Calamar, which I think is sort of the default setting for Hackmaster. Uh, Dragonlance, and then a few uh, adventures there as well. Then we got like Dungeonology on top of that. Oh, now I can sort of stand up straight again. <laughs> so here we have my 3.5 books. So, and again, I'm in the light. So here we have the core books. These are the reprints from 2012, I believe. Player Sandbook 2, DMG 2, Monster Manuals. Uh, I'm missing Monster Manual 5. I would love to get that, but don't currently have it. And then we got the uh, Races books, the Complete books. Um, I'm missing Complete Champion as well, but Complete Mage and Complete Scoundrel were kind of just awful enough that I uh, that I basically lost interest in them. Uh, we got our Regional or environmental based source books Heroes of uh, Battle, Heroes of Shadow Compendiums, Expanded Sonic's Handbook Incarnum, which I really love excuse me, I really love that system Tome of Magic Draconomicon awesome book, Libris Mortis, awful book, Lords of Madness uh, awesome, and then the Fiendish Codexes were great Draw of the Underdark was also great uh, Book of Vile Darkness, Exalted Deeds, and then the first two expedition books, uh, Expedition to Castle Ravenloft and Expe Expedition to the Demon Web Pits. Uh, I did not get the final two, which were Expedition to um, Undermountain and Expedition to Castle Greyhawk. Uh, I'd love to get those actually, looking back, but at the time I just wasn't interested. Uh, just some assorted, non-sorted <laughs> uh, minis and stuff out here. My uh, Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures that are still waiting to be painted someday. And the first two sets of dice I ever owned. And these dice are officially retired. Which I know sounds weird if you're not a D&D &D gamer, but they're just reached the point where some of your oldest dice, you, 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 you think they've done enough, uh, sort of thing. Up top I've got... Uh, character sheets for 5th edition, so this one here is sealed and the bottom one is open and then I've got my uh, the the dice, I can't remember the name of the dice game off the top of my head now um, but I did a video and stuff on that as well 
I don't think Dice Masters? I don't know. Uh, also here, and it's kind of got stuff on top of them, but these are my OD&D books, so this is the entire set, and the chainmail rules on the bottom there. Then we've got our Tactical Maps Reincarnated. Uh, this is a print-on-demand uh, thing for a free RPG day. Uh, fourth edition, this is uh, Dead in the Eye, which is like an awesome Beholder-based adventure. Um, Monsters, Icons of the Realm. Little Keep on the Borderlands for Hackmaster. I have the original Keep on the Borderlands, so I thought that was kind of cool. And just some old character sheets uh, tucked away in there as well. And then on our top shelf here, we've got our 5th edition and 4th edition. And some other stuff that's blocking a lot of uh, line of sight. And I'm not going to move these things out of the way, so we'll just have to deal with it. But we've got the 5th edition books here. With the exception of Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, which is on the other shelf. Then we got the screens, monster cards up top. Uh, and then we got the spell cards here. As well as the uh, the Taroka deck. And this is the, the card that was made for me when I was running D&D uh, &D for Autism Nova Scotia. Uh, the Dragon Die Holder. Which I'm actually going to move that back down here because that's where I wanted it in the first place. And then my 4th edition book collection which I still maintain is a really underrated version of the D&D game. And there are people that still say it's the worst thing that ever happened, but they love a lot of the mechanics of 5th edition. And uh, most of the mechanics of 5th edition are just sort of reworked versions of the 4E mechanics, so take that for what you will. Team of Annihilation dice, and then my 4th uh, edition DM screen here. And these are the adventure-based uh, DM screens that I have, uh, with the exception of one, which I need to do that video for again. Uh, so this is like Waterdeep, Tomb of Annihilation, um, Curse of Strahd, uh, Elemental Evil, and um, Rage of Demons. So I got all those. And then up top here, up above everything, oh, and on the side of my shelf is also my Icons of the Realm starter set. What I have, that's still sealed. Although it looks like it's starting to come off a little bit around the edges. So I'll have to keep an eye on that. Up top I've got some board games and some other things, so... Just have those. Uh, Catan Jr. Uh, a great strategy game uh, for, for kids. We wanted something for our daughter that promoted strategy and thought rather than just roll the dice and move your pieces. You know, we want, thought it would be good for, for focus and attention, and uh, she really liked this game. Got to break it down sometime, or bring it down again sometime and play it. Just an empty dice tube and a dragon dice battleground. That is still sealed. It's pretty cool. And then up above these two few board games, I've just got my unpainted Beholder Mini, uh, the Demo Gorgon uh, figure, which was a, uh, a bonus if you bought the sort of the iconic monster manual uh, set of minis, uh, which I didn't, but I was given this as a gift, which is really, really cool. I got some Magic uh, the Gathering Commander decks that I haven't opened yet. And then I have my sealed uh, starter sets. So starting with the 5th edition one, I ended up getting this for like uh, 7 bucks or something like that. Um, just I had the chapters had, which is a big book retailer chain in Canada. They they have a point system and every once in a while they will put you up to the next level uh, of points for redemption. So I had five dollars in my account uh, that I could redeem and they put it up to ten dollars and that's only good for a few days. So I decided it's like well the starter set's only gonna be like you know um, with their already discount it's only gonna be like seven dollars. <laughs> so I ended up getting that. And the Starfinder Beginner Box, um, I love the Beginner Box, and <clears throat> um, Paizo did send me the one that I reviewed, but I also wanted to have a sealed one of that, of that as well. And uh, basically, I just want to have like a sealed starter set um, going forward for everything uh, that, I, that I collect. So that is sort of the main room, <clears throat> however, there is still uh, some overflow. So there's one more room to go into. And it's definitely not nearly as organized, it's just sort of, um, like I said, it's sort of an overflow uh, because we, we lost an entire bookshelf when we moved. 
uh, just for space reasons and things like that. So we're going to go into that last room and uh, we'll take a look and that'll basically wrap up the video. Alright, so here we are in what's basically the overflow room. Um, so this is where I just have moved some things that uh, just take up space that I needed for something else, uh, basically. Uh, so this was actually, this is our middle bedroom. Uh, so we have this three bedroom apartment. This is sort of the smallest of the three bedrooms. Uh, and basically, right now it's just sort of a spare room. Like we still have the, uh, the bed set up, which is horribly made. Uh, that's my fault. Uh, but uh, my, my nephew was staying with us for a few months and um, while he was here this was his bed uh, this was his bedroom all the stuff that I have in here right now wasn't here uh, but when he when he moved back out then um, you know I just decided to use this um, basically just to again to, to carry any of the uh, the overflow so let's just kind of start here um, there are some things that are, of his that are still here um, like these minis, for example, uh, these were all ones that I had given to him, uh, but he left them when he when he moved out. The idea is that he would join me for some D and D games that I'm running, but that hasn't happened yet, unfortunately. Um, just some Dilbert books here. Good old Dilbert, love Dilbert. Uh, this is an empty GameCube box. This was the one that I had for my original GameCube. Uh, no, sorry. This is the one that I. This is the the box that I got when I had to rebuy the GameCube because I lent one to an ex and it disappeared. Basically, she sold it for for money. But anyway, uh, my 3DS box uh, and then just some Magic Card stuff in here. Uh, some other random assorted minis that I don't know if I was setting these aside for a game or they were just some ones that were left over. Uh, but then we have some actual RPG stuff here in terms of books and things. Uh, we also have a car charger for the Nintendo 3DS. Uh, here we have, uh, let's look at the stack first actually. So here I've got the Dragon Age uh, role playing game uh, hardcover book. Underneath it I have the Call of Cthulhu and then just some, some random loose leaf. Uh, underneath that I've got Explorers of Ixalan and then the two box sets for uh, Dragon Age, the two ones I was able to get, and then under that I've got the two Game Masters kits. So they have the, the Game Master screen and they each come with an adventure. So there's that. Uh, we also have Pathfinder, these are the flip tiles, uh, which I did a video on. Uh, we've got the uh, the shard here, so this was sent to me by the author. Uh, I did a, a video sort of uh, talking about it early on. Um, I never did get to finish reading it. It's not anything against the book itself. The book is actually really, really good, and it did hook me. It's just we kind of entered a, a period where there was a lot of stuff going on, and I just didn't have time to sit down and read. And um, basically, I want to go back and restart the book and go from there. But it is a really, 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 really good book. Just, you know, unfortunately, uh, life kind of got in the way, which it often does. Uh, so here I've got the map for the, this is the one that came out of the Dragon Age um, box set, or not the box set, the, uh, the hardcover book. Uh, it was held in place by one of those glue strips, and uh, they do stain uh, the maps if they're left too, too long. So I decided to take that out. Uh, I've got my, uh, some Call of Cthulhu stuff, D20 stuff. This is the dual statted Chaosium, so this was uh, statted for both the Chaosium version of the Call of Cthulhu game as well as the D20 version. So this is Arkham, Kingsport, and Dunwich. The only one that I'm missing uh, from that set is Innsmouth, which unfortunately is the one that I would want the most because I, I love shit like the story shadow over in Smith and Dagon. Then I've got the Nocturnum campaign, which is also really, really cool. Underneath that, we've got just a Super Nintendo book. So this is, I'm just going to set that controls over there for now. Uh, so this is a sort of companion book to the Super Nintendo Classic. It goes over all the books, or all the books, all the games that are in there. So we got that. Uh, just old Valentine's that my, my nephew got. Uh, the Pathfinder flip mat. Uh, the Playtest Multi flip mat. And... Uh, 
I'll have to find uh, Doomsday Dawn is somewhere. Um, the, the Alaska that broke, and there's the uh, the core rules, the Pathfinder Pawn set. Oh, there's Doomsday Dawn underneath the uh, the pawn set, and then we've got the three tile sets for D and D Fourth Edition. So the master tiles for the dungeon, the city, and the wilderness. Um, that's the same names I had for the fifth edition uh, tile sets reincarnated, although the contents were um, vastly different for the dungeon and the wilderness, and the exact same for the city, plus a couple of extra sheets and one sheet that was weirdly repeated. So anyway, that's that section. However, if we come over here, there's more. So these are first of all, these are my. Um, Dungeon Command uh, faction sets. Dungeon Command is another one of those really underrated games that nobody gave a chance uh, because it came out during the fourth edition era and it had the audacity to be a tabletop like strategy game that doesn't use dice, instead uses like cards and planning and stuff like that instead of just you know pure random luck. But anyway. Uh, I digress when it comes to that. Um, really, really love this game. Would absolutely adore seeing this brought back and um, have them release future uh, expansions for it, similar to what they did with the things like, um, not Curse of Strahd, uh, Castle Ravenloft, Wrath of a Shardalon, Legend of Dritz. They, they kind of brought that style back. So I'd love to see them do that with this as well because this game was absolutely awesome and nobody gave it a chance, which is criminal. But anyway. Uh, underneath those, I've got my Pathfinder Pawn collection, so that's the Dead Sons. I'm not going to move these out of the way, but we got the Dead Sons, then we have the Core Rules, uh, then we have Pact Worlds, which is actually still sealed, uh, and then there's the Alien Archive Pawn Box. Uh, Alien Archive 2 Pawn Box, I believe, is supposed to be out, but none of the stores in my area have gotten it in yet, so that's sort of on the list of things to get in the future. And then underneath that, I've got my uh, Pathfinder 1st Edition Core Rulebook. Uh, I, I bought it because a friend of mine was going to start running uh, Pathfinder, but then, you know, he ran a couple of sessions, it sort of fell apart, unfortunately, and then not too long after that I ended up moving, so uh, that's sort of the, the reason that I have that. But I am looking forward to getting Pathfinder 2nd Edition, and I will be getting those, uh, at least the first wave of, like, the, the launch stuff, and the, uh, at the very least, the first Adventure Path. Uh, so here we have the dungeon board game. So you may have seen a copy of this out on top of my bookshelf. Uh, that is the 2016 um, version, or 2014. This is this is the version that came out a couple years before. The artwork is a little bit more realistic looking. Um, this one's actually still largely um, I've like I've opened it up, but I didn't like open up the card packs or anything. Uh, the other one I did do that for though. Then we've got our Magic the Gathering uh, Arena of the Planeswalker, the base game, and the Battle for Zendikar. And then under that, we have whoop, my nephew's 5th edition player's handbook, and a copy of the original version of Pandemic, which is a really, really fun game as well. Uh, but there is more on top of that as well. So, let's actually start with the most boring of these first. So here we have, in one of the drawers here, just a, a little extra stuff here. We got uh, my booster box of Emon Cat, some uh, napkins that I use when I use the uh, dry erase board, just to wipe them off, uh, some markers that I don't use on the dry erase board, <laughs> um, but I do have for if I use like the, the draft paper to make large maps, uh, just some uh, Pathfinder Pawns bases, and a set of uh, Chainmail Minis. So we got that. Then in this drawer, whoop, which is a little bit harder to pull out because the, the handles are off to the side instead of in the middle, uh, we've just got some um, magic card stuff here as well. Card sleeves. Uh, there's a mini here. I actually had bought this for an ex and she stopped playing like immediately after I bought this. So it was actually in the package. Um, I had this uh, like in the package like this. I never actually opened it. It's just the glue failed after so many years. Uh, this is actually the second time I'm recording this portion of the video uh, because I realized that my fiance's business card 
uh, was on top of one of my books, and I didn't notice it at the time, but it had like uh, her name, phone number, and everything like that. So I don't, I don't want that uh, sort of being in the video. So we're we're having a do over here. But when I was uh, picking this up just to move it out of the way, it actually popped out of the box. So a little bit of uh, worthless trivia there. Uh, some more chainmail stuff. These are just stack cards for the D and D minis, plastic minis game. Uh, some chainmail minis that a friend of mine painted inside of a confrontation uh, package, which is another minis game. The City of the Spider Queen mini set. The Insmith Escape board game, which I never actually fully opened. And the Monopoly Zelda game. And then finally, we've got a whole bunch of chainmail. <clears throat> I just actually moved these in here last night at the time that I'm recording this. But, um, so here we have some faction sets. The, the the minis inside the box are not the ones that are supposed to be in there. Again, it just, everything got really disorganized. Uh, you know, these things happen, but I've got the Kill Sec, the, the Drow faction box, which was one of my favorites. Revilla, which was my favorite overall. The starter set in Drazen's Horde. Then we have the D&D minis. Um, not to be confused with the D&D miniatures, that would come out as the plastic pre-painted minis, but these were basically the, uh, here I'll just show this one here. So this was a, just a reuse of the chainmail figures. So that's what you got in that one. I'm not going to show them all off here in this particular video. And again, they're not organized at all <laughs> the way that they should be. Uh, just some of the smaller uh, set boxes. So we got the Furious Steel which is pretty cool. I like Mordengard as well, uh, but I had them all through like these things here yeah, and just and just like individual boosters. Uh, and then underneath that I've got the Order of the Stick Adventure game, which is really cool. I uh, played it once and we probably did it wrong, but it was still a lot of fun there. Uh, and that's it. That is that is actually it. There are some other things in like if we have a big to uh, some totes uh, that are just put away and they're just things like, you know, uh, random minis sort of just put in boxes similar to uh, what we have here. Just a bunch of things like this. I'm not really going to get into uh, any of that. But that is the basically the vast majority of my collection. And sort of how we're storing it at this point in time. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the video. And uh, it's always a work in progress. Um, I do want to get a replacement shelf. Now let's just actually walk and talk here. I actually do want to get a replacement shelf for the my main bookshelf that I have out here. And uh, I actually have the curtain drawn right now so you can sort of see the difference, uh, hopefully a little bit, in lighting. But I would love to get another shelf to replace this one because it's older. I've done the flipping the shelves over a couple of times and I don't want to run to that well too many times. Um, it would also be nice to have another larger bookshelf. I would probably move all of these and have another one that just sort of goes here so I can reunite like my Starfinder stuff for example have it all put together but anyway like I said it's limited space uh, we went from living in a full-sized house to a three-bedroom apartment so unfortunately uh, sometimes you just have to make um, some sacrifices in terms of what you can do with it but I don't think this is the worst use of the space possible uh, so anyway, just want to thank you guys once again for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, I will see you next time. Take care.